time to call okay. the May 15th regular zoning commission meeting to order. We have all the um, regular commissioners here, so we will not need any alternates. Good, thank you. Um, I think before we do the minutes, um, Kevin, can you? Yeah, I'd like to uh, to amend the agenda so that after um, the public hearings, we have a vote because it's not on here. And so we'll we'll vote after each public hearing. Um, We'll close the public hearing and, consider and then and then and then consider a vote if, if it's closed. <coughs> so we'll here, second for I'll motion. second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, the agenda is amended. Okay, we have two sets of minutes. Um, the minutes of the regular meeting that we had last time and any comments or corrections. I didn't see anything. Anybody see anything? No, I've read them though, and I, I move that we approve them as they were submitted. I'll second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I wasn't here. Okay, okay and one abstention. Five. Don, Don, I so. one abstention. Okay, the second minutes uh, the set of the special meeting, which preceded the regular meeting. Um, I have a question on line 27. Uh, I think we discussed that mobile food vendors could be could have a one-pay transaction. In other words, one person was paying for everything. But I don't think we agreed on that. Did yeah, I saw the same thing. I agree. The wording is needs to be tweaked slightly. Okay, so let's strike that sentence. We have a motion to approve the minutes as amended. So, go ahead, whoever. Ann's got it. Ann's got it. I did. Ann got it. So I moved. Second by Kevin. Oh, I'll Kevin. second that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I'm abstaining. Okay, five. Nothing that passes with one abstention. Okay, now we move to our first public hearing of the evening. Um, Mr. Vice Chairman, can you Okay, uh, applications uh, CZ 23-12 of Thomas Anderson owner, Susan Disease. Disease? Disease. Thank you. Uh, applicant for a special exception pursuant to uh, section 4.5 of the Simsbury Zoning Regulations to, a, to permit a 22 Plus or minus square foot school in a professional office zone at 507 Hot Meadow Street, Assessor's Map G13, Block 103, Lot 22. Okay, uh, is there someone here to, to present the uh, application or discuss it? I'm here to this, so. Susan, please. Yes. <laughs> Name and uh, address, please. Susan, yes. Can you tell us what you're planning to do and why? Sure. Um, so we've been in early childhood education for probably between 25 to 30 years. And it's shifted a lot with COVID and even prior to that. Um, we're seeing a lot of need for smaller classrooms and I want to say almost old-fashioned schooling where the kids learn through play, they can go outside and learn through their environment, how to respect their friends, behavioral issues. Um, so I decided to venture on my own, and we are hoping to be approved to have a um, ECE Global Academy at 507 Hot Meadow, um, 18 students. And we are not looking to go corporate. This is about quality. Um, not quantity, and I have three students, uh, so it'll be 18 students and three teachers and one administrator. Thank you. And I just want to say what I like, I grew up in the valley, and what I really appreciate about Simsbury is Simsbury is tending to say 
as true as it can with the growth in the valley, which I really appreciate. Thank you. Um, any questions for the applicant? Oh, actually, I do have just one quick question. So it's a small, are, are there going to be buses or is it going to no, be no, just no. people it's coming? A, I'm sorry. It's preschool, pre-K. Okay. So oh, okay. three, four, and five-year-olds. Okay. No buses. Okay. And is there a drop-off spot design now that the parking lot's, I mean, it is interesting to try to put a school, have to come for a special exception to put a school in a school. But, um. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it, so the... The location of where we, we will be is in the back of the building. It's where the gym was because it was the old South School. Right. right. It was the old South School. So we will be located in the back. So if there won't be any problem with traffic out front, the people will just go all the way down in the back, and then we bring the children in. And you also mentioned um, outdoor mm -hmm. time. I'm not sure. I, I mean, I've been in the back and I thought there was an awful lot of parking back there, but I don't remember play area. There's an awful lot of parking and play area. I'm not sure what the... You're, you're correct. It's uh, mostly parking area back there. There is some... some Do you have the, the, the site plan there? Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, that's even a better picture. Yeah, so, so you know, if you would just talk to me through... So you, you, you come in on the, the top of the driveway there and go around that little island. <laughs> And then, so is that where your drop off? Yeah, yeah, yeah you can walk and point. Yeah. Use that laser pointer of yours. Use your hand if you want. Okay. Just use okay. your, okay. your finger. Okay. She points off. Um, so, anyways, yes. Yeah, so, this would be Hot Meadow here. Right. And you would pull into the front of the building and go all the way down and back. Uh oh. And then we are located in this area here. So, we have handicapped parking. Um, we're all set for that. This is the sidewalk area here that goes right to our door. This area here and then this area here would be where we put in fencing so that we can allow the kids to learn outside. We'll have, um, I know it sounds kind of silly, but <coughs> schools have gotten rid of sand pits, so to speak, and children do so much learning through, right? interactive and uh, so we will be building quite an extensive sand pit so that we will do a lot of learning in that area as well as on the grass there <clears throat> okay I, I don't think as part of the plan we saw that there was fencing going in or you know any other site changes and the other thing you know i don't know what your parking condition is here if you have extra spots That's but this. i would think you would want to be able to block off all. exactly where the kids are going to drop this is all parking here. Yeah. We have this area here. Yeah, but can you block some, you know, can you remove some of that parking so that when the kids get out? Because right now you're, 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 the you're. Parking's right here, sir. And then the, the child gets out of the car and goes right to Okay, with the their sidewalk. parent. Okay, all right. There's no really. No curbside park problem. Curbside. Yeah, I, I was just offered that it was when we converted from the South School back in the 1980s. Could you um, give your name and address? Um, my name is Tom Anderson. Building was set up in compliance with zoning regulations for parking requirements. Yeah. Uh, there's a fair amount of site coverage there. That, uh, property boundaries are uh, not very far from the, uh, the edge of the parking. We will have uh, there is wood, wooded repairs. But, uh, there, could, there could certainly be adjustments to the striping. I think that would probably be a conversation with the, there has never been close to the number of cars for parking space that are there, so it might be a, a conversation with the mayor or something about uh, service. I was going to say, for 20, that's a lot of parking for 20 people, what, like five staff? That's, that's way too much. Yeah. We have well, they're not 100% right. of the use. They don't use oh, the oh, okay. Yeah. Right. CT Vanix is there, right? No. No. There's a surgeon, right? There's a surgeon. Dental surgeon. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
different times of the day to just see how the traffic <laughs> flows. This to be the first and little field in never once has anyone been down no, it's parking lot. on the lower level of um, parking. There's there's substantial parking um, up on top. We've never had any cars down on that area. So, and the cars aren't staying there, right? They're going to drop their kids off and they're going to leave and come back at the end of the day. So, um, we will be. 8 30 to 4 30 monday through friday and we will be closed in august hmm. any more questions so do we need to see the fence on a plan then if we're if it says currently no site alterations do we how do we is that a site alteration you can ask you, you can ask you can add a condition that would allow staff to work with the applicant to add that draw in that fencing on a plan or you could wait for it and see yourself. Well, maybe if we could do that if you would kind of point out where you think you would put this fence so that it's not entirely up to staff, oh, sure. not that they don't trust mm -hmm. them. Yeah, the fence in the area <laughs> is going to be, okay. Which, sorry, right here. Okay. This will be the fenced in area. Yeah. So, and, and also, um, after we get finished with this step, then we will be applying with the Office of Early Childhood Education. So um, they'll be coming out to the site and making sure everything is up to regulations for us. Thank you. Any more questions? Ian? No. Okay. Yes, that's exactly. Um, what's really nice too is we have a lot of blocking space, so we'll be doing, um, you know, almost like uh, hiking because it is. It looks really tiny on the screen, but if you go by and drive, it's it's really a beautiful piece of property, and there's there's plenty of space to use on the back side of it at the end, and then we were going to be, you know, walking through the woods, so to speak, to have the kids, so. Okay, can we have a motion to close the public hearing? <laughs> well, we can see if there's a public no, oh, sure sorry. there's anybody who wants to speak up. <laughs> yes. Is there anyone in the public who wishes to speak to this application? Sorry. Okay, then I move that we close the uh, public hearing on application CZ 23-12. I'll second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It carries 6-0. The public hearing is closed. And now, on our amended agenda, we will move to the consideration of application 23-12. Yeah, we need to review the... Uh, this special exception standards. And I, I, I believe it actually meets them. Uh, the orderly development, I think it meets that. The property values, it won't change the property values. Well, public safety, I mean, it was a school. Um, traffic considerations, it won't, actually I think they had this, uh, I think it wasn't them. Okay. Um, mixing up my applications now. <laughs> um, landscaping and buffers, um, other than the fence, I don't think there's a need for that. In relationship to utility systems, drainage systems, and impact on community facilities, I think it, it meets all the criteria for special exceptions. Do we need to make mention of anything in there about <coughs> staff working with them for site improvements, or are we okay with this? No, we'll do that when we get to the motion. Oh, sorry, I was jumping ahead. Yeah. Before the motion, we have to consider um, the... I, I just have, <coughs> since you brought that up, relation to utility systems, so I'm assuming that their requirements for um, bathroom facilities and stuff are There's up to up to code. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. All right. That, I just forgot to ask. Okay. Okay. Someone ready to make a motion? <clears throat> Would you like me to make the motion? Sure. Okay, Kevin, you tell me when I need to pop in that part. <laughs> um, 
I move that the Zoning Commission approves application ZC number 23-12 of Thomas Anderson owner Susan Ziz, Diz. Thank you. Applicant for a special exception pursuant to section 4.5 of the Simsbury Zoning Regulations to permit a 2,200 square foot school and professional office zone PO at 507 Hop Meadow Street, Sessor's Map G13, Block 103, Lot 022. Commission finds that the application for special exception ex exception has met the standards set in section 4, business districts, and the special exception criteria in section 12, orderly development, property values, prop, uh, public safety, traffic considerations, landscaping and buffers, and relationship to utility systems, drainage systems, and impact on community facilities. Um, the application is not accepted to have any negative impacts on the above considerations and is subject to the following conditions. An administrative zoning permit is required for construction and to um, a site plan with with fence as described during the meeting will be submitted for review and approval by staff. Yes. What she said. What she said. What okay. she said. Yes. <laughs> we have a second. I'll second. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Carry six nothing. Thank you very much. Okay. Public hearing number two. Mr. Vice Chairman. Yes. Yes. Application CZ. No. Z, C, uh, 23-19 of Simsbury Gristmill, LLC, owner Chris Nelson, applicant, site plan amendment pursuant to section 11 and a special exception pursuant to section 6 of the Simsbury zoning regulations for the replacement of existing approximately 754 square foot the pedestrian bridge in the floodplain, the floodplain zone for an accessory food truck and for outdoor dining space at Millwright Restaurant and Pad zone at 77 West Street, Assessor's Map F11, <coughs> Block 103, Lot 005-21. Thank you, Kevin. Mr. Chairman, before the applicant approaches, uh, just um, two, two, two points uh, for the public hearing. The Design Review Board reviewed this application this evening and um, has provided a, a, a unanimous positive referral to you this evening. And you also received um, this application did proceed to the to the, to the in the wetlands, water and water courses agency, and that report was filed or for that for the record, uh, and they rec uh, they approved the wetlands permit by a vote of seven to zero. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Mary. <Ann. laughs> My name is Mary Ellen Nelson. My Mary husband Ellen. and I both own Simsbury Gristmill. And uh, the steel on the back of that bridge and on the deck was put in in the early 80s. It is time to replace it. So while we're replacing that steel, we would like permission to expand the bridge by four and a half feet to make it wider. Because as everybody has enjoyed outdoor dining during COVID, we want to be able to continue that. So we're going to take the deck that's there that currently seats 40 some odd people and just transfer that seating over to the bridge. So Tyler Anderson's the owner of Millwrights, and Jack Kemper is the architect that's designed this. We go to the plans. You want the, the black and white plan sets? Yeah. Okay. You might want to start with the site plan. So you can see uh, Jack Kemper, Kemper Associates Architects. I'm used to doing that, so I always have to do that. Um, <laughs> We're, you can see the extra width on the bridge. That's the, the main thing we're looking for. It's getting a new foundation at the, um, the land side, the south side. Um, this has gone over by engineers. Uh, it's, it's a pretty sophisticated system of some very large beams uh, that are going to be going in there. The beams, as Mary Ellen said, had to be replaced anyway. So what we're looking to do is add four and a half feet to it um, to the width. Um, we're going to put some rolling windows in so they can be used uh, longer during the year. Um, and we're really kind of replicating the, the, the feel of it as, as, as much as we can with the changes. We're still having that sort of cantilevered gable at the end um, where, where it goes over to the, um, to the other side of the creek. 
Uh, a couple other things we're looking at, and Tyler can speak to this more than I can, is we're looking to sort of codify the food truck that's been there during COVID. It's a smaller food truck, and what we've been able to do is to get more uh, access around it. Tyler can talk more about that um, than, than the rest of it. The other thing we're doing, this, um, this bridge will seat 48 people. We're looking to take out the deck that they don't use and just um, replace and, and then do some work on the outside of, of the building, which you can see the elevations. At this time, while we're doing this, this whole building is gonna get an exterior renovation. Uh, 12 years ago, we did the inside, now it's time for the outside. So the materials are, we went through with the design review board. It's a new red metal roof. This, the, the, it's how, the whole building is gonna be repainted and um, and fixed up all the windows everything so we're just this is the time to do everything on the outside you can see on the south elevation where the deck was was a door we're looking to put in big plate glass windows working around the post that's in beam that are there you can see the um the the, the wider bridge on the right side of that elevation and um then one thing that we changed um after meeting with the staff last week was uh, we took out one window on the west elevation because that's gonna be sort of a staging serving area for the bridge. Um, so then I think that's, that's it. So basically we're taking out the deck and replacing it with the larger bridge. And Tyler, if you wanna talk about the, the TACU truck truck in, in that area. Sure. So this will be the third, if we're able to do it, the third year of us doing that down there. We got a smaller, previously, in previous years, we've had two trucks down there. So one was the cashier and the booze, and one was the kitchen. This year we're consolidating into one truck. We had, it wasn't the most comfortable pedestrian walkway that we've had in the past. It took up too much of our parking. So we're making our footprint smaller. Um, but aside from that, the, we're looking for the tables to stay the same. The seating, we have ADA up top. So ADA, those table, the, the, nothing downstairs that's that's yep those two are the ada up top and then down the stairs for the traditional seating and then bar style seating out on that deck right there so keeping it the same amount of seats that it's been just collapsing the footprint of the kitchen and the cashier area and that's a site plan amendment right that's right yes when you did your alcohol permit do you know if it was for the whole property or just internal? You know that has to be amended? It's, it has to be amended. So that is a special exception then. It's adding another bar to the same address. Yeah, to the same address. Yeah. But but in the old days, we used to do it by you know, the space, but now it's kind of broader. Yeah. But yeah. A lot easier. But, but yeah, I, I didn't realize you had alcohol there, so that would be a consideration. The other thing is, on the end of the, uh, the bridge that is away from the building, is that got an enclosure on it? Is there a door on it? Yes. Now in the new system? Yes. Okay. Yes, we're putting new doors at both ends, double doors. Yep. It turns out for, for, for them it works easier to have the bigger opening. And in the summer, are they just left open, or are, they, are you moved? The doors? Yeah. No, no I think they're left open. And the windows were designed to come out. Yeah, so, I understand the windows were, yeah. but I didn't, you know. No, I don't think we're going to the doors. Not at the end. The no. door, the door at the, the door at the front for service will be able to come okay. out. Okay. Yeah. At the end, we want to keep the bugs out. Yeah. <laughs> Are there open windows? <laughs> yeah. Tree yeah. And the windows. Oh. <laughs> uh, do you? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's it'll, it'll, it'll get, windows. it'll get us through. It'll be a four season. Okay. Season. I was going to ask it. The, the porch is heated, though, right? Or is it heated? It will be. It will be. It will be. Okay. We're going to do mini splits. Okay. Gotcha. And that's not considered an addition to the building then, if it's four season? No? If it's still a porch? Say that, say that one more time. The bridge. So the bridge is, is, is supposed to be kind of like outdoor dining. Mm -hmm. But if it's a four season room. It's, it's actually that, a three season room. It's not. Come, come January, February, you're not going to want to sit so it's but not yeah. considered an addition to the building. No, I think it is. It's the fact that they're removed. They're removing the existing bridge and replacing right. it with new. It, it will be a replacement. It certainly we would call it an addition for sure. 
So they'll submit building plans to, to oh, yeah. the building department and go through that process. So yes, I mean it's it's. But so if you're adding square footage to the building, technically, yes, are you then coming up with new requirements for the site based on additional square? So footage? the additional square footage is, is de minimis. I think it's, it's we're removing, 500. And we're removing the deck. Okay. We're taking the seats from the deck and moving the seats. Right. Plus you've got a net negative here with the with the outdoor deck. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. It's not an outdoor. Okay. Other questions? <coughs> I have a question on the alcohol permit. Um, in order for you to serve alcohol outside, you have to have a, a state permit, right? Yes. You, you have one now? We'll get one. you got to get one. To get one, you need an authorization from the town. Yes. Yeah, so we'll, 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 so we, we hadn't had we hadn't discussed that as part of this application. So we, um, Laura Markowski, uh, CEO, um, we'll get with Tyler and, and the applicant team and, and figure out what those steps are and review their existing permit. Figure out what the steps for any additional permit is. And if they need so to return, they need to return. It is not part, part of this, correct? Part of this application. Yeah, the special exception piece of this is solely for the construction in the map floodplain zone. Right, and the site plan amendment is for the food truck food reconfiguration. Truck and the bridge and the removal of the of the uh, of the dam. Would it not be possible to add the liquor tonight? Well that, that's gonna if it's if it requires a full special exception, we would we would have to advertise appropriately. Oh advertising, yeah, advertising. Yeah, right, we haven't advertised that, correct. Other questions of the applicant? They didn't bring samples. <laughs> I've removed samples. I'm sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> the boring sample. samples. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, anyone in the public care to speak to this application? Can someone back here, please come up and give me an address, please. Hi, my name is Lori Boyko. I live at 15 Oakhurst Road. I also own a property at 61 West Street, which is a little Ensign Bickford house that I rent out on West Street. Um, and while I'm not entirely opposed to the expansion of the bridge, um, I do have quite a bit of an issue with the food truck, which has been operating basically in the backyard of my tenants. Um, I've been speaking out a lot lately at various town boards and commissions. People should know that I absolutely hate politics and my hands and knees literally shake when I stand here and talk. But our town government is so off the rails that I believe it is my obligation to be an informed citizen and to speak out against government mismanagement. <coughs> In fact, it is really the obligation of all of us to be informed and involved citizens in order to have our government of the people, by the people, and for the people as to opposed to a government run by officials on proverbial thrones deciding what they think is in our best interest. Our ancestors literally fought a revolution and pledged their lives, fortunes, and sacred honor for us to be governed by ourselves rather than by kings. Excuse the, me, can you address the application? I am. I'm, I'm there. That had nothing to do with this application. It, it, well, I'm getting there. The least I can do is speak with shaking knees. Tonight, I need to speak about how the work of our governance is getting done as much as what is getting done. This board has recently addressed a number of major issues that people in town felt and feel passionate about. Notable in all of those cases was the fact that representatives from industry were given far more time and weight in those processes than residents, citizens, and electors. During the marijuana retail discussions, Cure Leaf and Fine Fettle appeared at your request and had the floor for a combined 35 minutes to regale you about the industry, while not a single voice of concern was requested to present. Even more concerning was at the recent special meeting, dubbed a workshop, in which restaurateurs were literally seated at the table with unlimited time to talk. Many restaurant owners in town are not electors. They are all business owners. Some are electors, but many are not, and all, as well as the Main Street Partnership, yeah, excuse us. You're were still seated not addressing at this the application. table. It's about, that no, meeting no, it was about, about the food trucks. About this trips. application for, for 77 West Street. Come on, please. 
The businesses are important in town, but it is the people who are all created equal and endowed with equal rights. Where food trucks are allowed to operate has an impact and is in the direct purview of zoning. Mill Rights has been operating a food truck that is in direct opposition to current local ordinance for two years, maybe more. I'm not opposed to outdoor dining, but a food truck operating literally in the backyard of a property I own, obliterating my tenants' peaceful enjoyment of their property and diminishing my property value is precisely what the Zoning Commission exists <coughs> to prevent. While a restaurant way down at the other end of the parking lot existed when we bought our house, a food truck parking in the backyard surrounded by picnic tables and an outdoor smoker did not. The chair of this board in that special meeting stated to Millwrights, albeit with a wink and a nod, that Millwrights would have to operate that food truck business illegally until this legislation policy could be passed in July. It's on tape. What took place at that meeting looked very much like a cartel. A cartel is a collection of independent businesses that <clears throat> act together. They may agree on, among other things, prices, market shares, and allocation of territories. Cartels hurt consumers because their existence results in higher prices and restricted supply. It is imperative that the electors of this town are given equal voices and equal time and equal presentations of opposing positions and members of our town governing bodies need to be mindful of avoiding any intentional or inadvertent appearance of collusion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Does anyone else care to speak to this application? Mr. Chairman, I move that we close the public hearing on application ZC 23-19. Before we do that, um, I think we should discuss whether or not there's ways to mitigate the impact on the neighborhood. Mitigate what? The impact of food truck on can we, the neighboring can, property. Can maybe we, we can be, somebody can indicate where the neighboring properties <coughs> that we're talking about are? Thank you. Yeah. So you have the food, the food, the food truck is in this location. If you, if you think about that long parking lot, so this would be as you kind of you've eaten there, you, you drop your, your your friends and family off, and then you mm -hmm. kind of drive towards in the back parking area. Then, um, so it would be in those one of those front area parking spaces. Then you have, of course, the hot brook right mm -hmm. on this side, and then you go back across. There are some. Uh, condos or townhouses up, right. up on the hill a little bit here. Well, I think she was talking She's looking for the uh, former uh, AB houses right. on West Street, we number 16 West Street. Where overall that. site plan is. I don't think I have a map. It's well, it's north of the red line. It's it's where the red line is. I yeah. Oh, okay. Going this way. Past the yeah. stoplight. Oh, it's off right. the top? It's on West Street. It's not so down on the West Street. Right where the restaurant is. Is that it? The right Actually, there aren't any down there. Are they not the properties up? No, there's four or five. Water. No, that's the four up, 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 up. up yeah, those are probably the, yeah. 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 Because there aren't any down past. I thought the grist mill was. No, this is, this is, a, this is, a, this is a, a small inset of the property. Oh, 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 oh. That makes more sense. Okay. Thank you. What's that? I mean, I can go to an aerial if you just give me one second. Yes. Yeah, that'd be great. <clears throat> oh, that's why the red line is here, it's identifying as an insert. These houses have about a six yeah, foot elevation, the, eight foot those, elevation. On the insects, yeah. those pieces, those four, proper, four houses. I think they're farther down. Mm. Well, I mean, our, you know, Marquis have a place. That's when you No, they're not past the intersection. West. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, east. Right. I don't know what's there. Hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Right, the properties you're talking about are above, <coughs> yeah. Interesting. above the wall, are they not? Over here. Maybe you could point out where the food truck is in relation to those houses. It's right underneath. Kind of here. Yeah. Yeah. Ish. Oh, actually, here, I think. Right just past the. Yeah, right there. Yeah. For two years, it's been operating down to the right. Right in my backyard. For one year, it has. I'm sorry, what was that though? It changed. It's not in your backyard anymore as of last year. It's it's further down. It, will, it operated there for one year, further down. Okay. Would you like me to show you on the map where it used to and where it currently is? Yes. Yes, please. Yes. Thanks. Two years ago, we were right here. Mm -hmm. We're currently, last year, we moved right here. And this year it'll be half the size as it was last year. Will the smoker size change at all? Uh, yeah, it's half the size as well. That is as well. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, any more comments by the commission? Mr. Chair, I would just offer one thing just relative to, to why it's on the site plan. Um, we, we think that there are cases for food trucks today <clears throat> that can be considered by you as accessory uses to another commercial business on the property, just like any commercial business can have accessory uses. Um, so, so that's why we do not think it needs to wait for the for the food truck regulations that it can be permitted. This is a this is going to be in that location. It is not a traveling food truck as we understand it. So it will be sited on this property for the duration of the season. We consider that an accessory use that can be permissible by site plan. Okay. Any more questions? And, and do you know what the season is considered? Or I don't know. Memorial Day to Labor Day. Okay, <laughs> thanks. So we're ready to close the public hearing. Okay. Somebody make a motion. All right. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that on regarding application ZC 23 19 that we close the public hearing. Mayor second. Second. Second by Bruce. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Carries 6 nothing. Application is closed. Any public hearings closed? And now we'll move to the amended agenda, agenda, which is consideration of the application ZC 23-19 for both a special exception and a site plan amendment. I, I, I think that um, Mr. Gray had made a motion previously that you've done that so you can take it up. Right. Yeah. Comments or? Uh, well, I will move the first part of this uh, that we or do we want to do a discussion on a special exception first? Well, let's do the first special exception. If you make the motion, then we can discuss it. Okay. Uh, I move that the that we approve application uh, CZ ZC 2319 of the Simsbury Grist Mill LLC owner, uh, Chris Nelson, applicant for a special exception pursuant to Section 6 of the Simsbury Zoning Regulations for the replacement of an existing 754 square foot pedestrian bridge in a floodplain zone at Mill Wright's Restaurant 77 West Street, Assessor's Map F11, Lot 103, Lot 05-21, based upon the following, the following findings. The special exception criteria found in Section 12 of the Simsbury, uh, Town of Simsbury Zoning Regulations have been substantially met or satisfied. Those considerations include, one, order the development, two, property values, three, public safety, four,
traffic considerations, five, landscaping and buffers, and six, relationship to the utility systems, drainage systems, and impact on community facilities. The application is not so expected to have any negative impacts on any of the above considerations. Second? Okay, any discussion? No. I think the inland wetlands are the people that have the most concern here and the most things to worry about, and they were happy with the uh, replacement. And it is really a replacement. So, any other comments? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> Abstain. Okay, the special exception is approved. Six, nothing. Okay, uh, let's go on to the site plan amendment. Right, I, make, I move that the Zoning Commission approve application ZC23-19 of the Simsbury Grisbell LLC owner, Chris Nelson, applicant. Site plan amendment pursuant to section 11 of the Simsbury Zoning Regulations for the replacement of an existing um, 754 square foot pedestrian bridge for an accessory tr food truck and for outdoor dining at Millwright's Restaurant, 77 West Street, uh, Assessor's Map F11, Block 103, Lot 005-21, based on the following findings. The applicant meets the site plan requirements set forth in Section 11 of the Zoning Regulations, and the application meets the, zone, the, the flood plain zone requirements as applicable set forth in Section 6 of the Zoning Regulations, and is subject to the following considerations. The project shall be developed in substantial conformance to the site plan dated 4-10-23, prepared by Lore, Lore, Engineering Associates. The project shall be developed in substantial conformance with the architectural plans dated 5-12-23, prepared by Cianci Engineering LLC and Kemper Associate Architects LLC. An administrative <coughs> zoning permit is required prior to the issuance of a building permit. I'll second. I'll second. I'll second. Go ahead. Yeah. Any discussion? I think we should maybe add a condition that the noise at the border of the property be constrained to 75 dB. I think that's a state regulation anyway, but. Well, we don't have to add it if it's a state regulation. True. So you can choose to say no. Well, I don't think it's, it's easily it's enforceable or understood, so no, I'm not in favor of it. The street probably gets up to that He's not way more often. Sorry, you're, you're, no, we're, we're past the, past the public area. Well, if that's the case, then they're protected by that as well. Wow. Okay. Any but the issue discussion? that was raised by the, the only person who spoke spoke about issues that I, I didn't hear raise the issue of noise. It was the odors of the wafting over from the uh, meat, cooking meat, and also uh, whatever goes with the truck. I'm not sure what offensive things that creates, whether it's noise. Maybe it is. Maybe you're on the right track. 75 decibels, Dave. Well, it has been moved. And it has moved quite a few feet west. Right. Right. So it should be less offensive. Are we ready to vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. The chair is six nothing. Thank you. Okay, next item of business is application ZC 23-18 of Dorset Crossing. And they're proposing a modification to the bad master plan. And this is the beginning of the process where they're explaining to us uh, what they intend to do. So can you, Mr. Giorgio? Well, Chairman and members of the commission. It's good so, to finally see... Tony Giorgio from where? 
I'm Dr. Tony Giorgio from the Keystone Companies. I sometimes forget. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's good to see you all in person. The last time we visited, it was remotely about a year or so ago. And at that point, we chatted a little bit about what we face at Dorset Crossing. As many of you know, back in 2010, this commission or your predecessors and the town staff and Keystone worked together to create the land area development called Dorset Crossing. At that point, our vision was to create a mixed use community with residential, retail, and office. And we were fortunate back in 2010-11 that we were able to build a 15,000 square foot medical office building and we filled it with St. Francis Medical Center and we put up 168 market rate apartments called The Point, which enjoys a 97% occupancy. And we also put up 48 special needs units called Jake and Commons, which is filled at 100% with individuals with long-term disabilities such as MS. A lot has changed since 2012 in the world. And we find ourselves facing the reality that the demand for office space is just not there anymore. The vacancy factor for office space, medical office space, is in the 20 to 28 percent range. And the demand for housing is in the 97 percent range with a 3 percent vacancy. When I chatted with all of you informally a year or so ago, I indicated to you that we were thinking about trying to mix up the uses and provide for more residential development in a certain area of the park, basically the area that's to the left of the existing medical office building. And you indicated to us that you understood that the market had changed and that we should proceed to come forward. Since then, we have resubdivided the property so that we now have a lot H, which is everything to the left of the office building, that area. And what we're asking you to consider is allowing us to replace those office buildings with the potential of 72 multifamily buildings, which would be arranged in three buildings of approximately 24 units each. At the end of the day, we would end up adding 72 units of housing. We would still have the 15,000 square feet of office. We're also asking you to consider allowing us to add retail to that office because the demand in the marketplace is for more retail we would retain the retail position in lot F. So at the end of the day, that's lot F, and that would remain retail, and that has the potential of up to 14,000 square feet of retail. At the end of the day, we would end up with uh, 15,000 square feet of office and retail, another 15,000 square feet of additional retail, and an additional 72 housing units. That would be added to, you've already approved an application for Crown Properties for 72 units on lots D and G. Uh, everything else remains the same. Uh, we recognize that sometimes it's difficult when you project 10, 12 years ago what you hoped you could develop and then you sit today in a market that has changed dramatically. Uh, we have been approached repeatedly by developers who would like to add multifamily to the community. These developers are talking about age restricted. They're talking about market rate. They're talking about workforce housing. Anyone and all of those things would make sense at Dorset Crossing. We have said in response to your comments a year or so ago, that the community would like to see more affordable and more workforce types of housing. 
And the developers that we're talking to have had experience in all of those products. And they know full well that if we're going to negotiate a deal with them, they're going to have to provide some kind of consideration for workforce housing or age restricted or some form of affordability. Um, I'm hoping that the commission will recognize that the opportunity to realize the dream of developing the Northern Gateway with a mixed use community is real. We may have been a decade ahead of our time. It took Big Y six or seven years to make a decision. When we were out there, that was a gravel pit and we were able to mediate it and create a very rateable community. We're asking for your consideration to allow us to continue to develop it. We're not asking for new uses. We're asking for a reorchestration of the uses. They'll still be retail, they'll still be office, and they'll still be uh, residential. We think it's kind of exciting because, as you all know, the town has decided to expand the walkway from where it currently terminates in front of um, Antonio's all the way up beyond where we are and then up Dorset Crossing Road, which is a public road. And we think that will enhance the walkability of this area. We think adding another 72 units mm -hmm. of studios and one bedroom and two bedroom units will just enhance the opportunity to make this a fully developed community and will encourage even more retail uh, activity along the 10 and 202 corridor. Uh, we will prepare when we come back for public hearing the hard data on the exact vacancies and the demand. But right now, I can assure you that all you need to do is drive up and down Route 10 and 202 to see the for rent signs in front of commercial buildings and medical office buildings to know that there is no demand for what was originally approved. There is a market and there is an opportunity, I think, for the community to support us developing some more housing out there with ample parking and open space and with some criteria as to the nature of that housing going forward. Uh, David Zayax, the president of Heskett is with me to go through the specifics of the site plan, but I'm here to ask, answer any questions you might have about the concept we're trying to put forth in terms of changing the concept plan, the master concept plan that was approved back in 2010, 2011, to allow for a, a little bit more housing and a little less office. So I'm just curious, it, notwithstanding the fact that we're changing you know, the use from medical office buildings to retail, but if we're looking at business versus residential, what's the percentage now versus what you're proposing? Well, right now we have one 15,000 square foot office building yeah. <clears throat> and we have 168 market rate apartments and we have 48 special needs apartments. The area that we're discussing, lot H, has the potential for another 40,000 square feet of office. We're proposing to replace that with 72 residential units. So and that's the only difference, everything else is as... Well, there's one other, I'm asking for the 15,000 square foot medical office building, which is now labeled medical office, to be able to allow for both medical use and retail use. But that's the only change we're requesting Oh, I thought you reduced the square footage for the other proposed mixed-use building. Well, what, what you have in front of you is a concept. When this was originally approved, we had to come forth and suggest what we thought the buildings might look like. And originally, that lot F was going to be the site for a Walgreens pharmacy. And that was 14,500 square feet. So that's what was approved on that. What we presented in this application is to show you that it's just as conceivable, lot F, 
could have two smaller buildings rather than one mega 14,500 square foot building. But re keep in okay. mind that all those buildings are, are placeholders. So when anyone comes in with a specific application for lot F or lot H, they have to go through the entire site plan approval, wetlands approval, and everything else, so that whatever they propose to build on lot F or lot H will meet all of the criteria that was originally part of the concept plan. So we're not, we're not doing anything more than shuffling, if you will, the percentages of retail and residential in office. And you said you had 70% occupancy for the current? The point, the 168 mm -hmm. apartments have, have a 97% 97. Okay. occupancy. I was confused by 70. Right. And at Ojeki and Commons, the special needs, it's 100% yeah. occupancy. Whereas my office building has 20% occupancy. And quite candidly, the prospects of filling up that other 46 or 48,000 square feet that I'm seeking to replace are dim. But you and said that from a retail standpoint, you have, a bit, have had a bit more interest? Yeah, we've had, interestingly enough, without divulging any, any uh, proprietary information, we have a potential tenant that would like to, do, to move into the office building and put in a golf simulation facility. But you see, that's retail or entertainment. And I can't legitimately <laughs> enter into no negotiations with them when it says medical office. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of stuff we're hearing. Well, you know, we, I don't know if, if you would consider some of the ancillary medical uses like the vein clinic and mammograms and stuff like that. I mean, they're medical, but they're really more retail uh, as, as we see. So I'd like maximum flexibility to, build a, to fill the building, to be very honest about it. Um, but I want to do it within your regulations, and I want you to be comfortable with it. <coughs> May I ask David Zayek to join me? Pardon? Yes. May I ask sure. David to join us? Thank you. Yes. Mr. Chairman, maybe, maybe this is a good time for me just to kind of remind you um, what type of application this is. This course is a, it's zone PAD, Planned Area Development. And any time there is a change, and this is a significant change, it really is, it's really a two-step process. So tonight you hear an introduction from the applicant, and then we ask you to make a motion to refer this application to design review, Conservation Commission to um, to the Planning Commission, and that's that's, that's kind of that, that's what that's what it says in your regulation for the for the PAD. They review it, provide comments. Those comments come back to you. We'll try to do that by early June, and at that point, you make a decision to schedule a public hearing for the zone change and map amendment, which would happen later in June or early July. Okay. Good. Good evening. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. My name is Dave Zayax. I'm a professional <coughs> engineer with F.A. Heskett Associates, and we're located next door over in East Granby. Um, I've been working on this since 2004. It's an old four project for us, and I, I promised myself this year I was going to wrap up all the old four projects in the office. <laughs> so I'm hoping we can move forward quickly on this uh, with success. Uh, as Tony pointed out, that front lot F. Um, that was designed for Walgreens. Walgreens was all hot to come, and uh, right around that time, uh, they, both CVS and Walgreens started pulling back, particularly in the suburban locations, and uh, have never come back. So that, that box with the drive-through window, I figured it was a no-brainer. We have a drive-through window with a traffic light, and they're all, they were at that time, that's what they wanted. So uh, for whatever reason, strange economics, uh, it never happened. So what we, we know is there's a lot of retail interest in smaller buildings, um, you know, uh, potentially with a drive to, through to. Um, so we've reoriented that to give you a better idea of what we think is probably going to develop there. Not a single 14,000 square foot retail is going to be 
a combination of a couple of buildings. And then uh, the, where we're looking at the apartments over there on lot H that we subdivided last year, uh, we did a typical kind of a layout. We're working on a lot of these projects throughout Harford County. And uh, this is basically 24 unit buildings, nice garden style apartments <coughs> uh, with a dog park and amenities, you know, trying to space things out, knowing what uh, developers are going to be looking for. So that gives you a nice comfortable layout there. Everything fits within the old parameters of the PAD as far as coverage goes, drainage, utilities, there's plenty of sewer capacity, there's plenty of water capacity. Dorset Crossing Drive was built to town standards and accepted as a town road. And we put the new traffic light out at that intersection. I was pleased to see, as Tony pointed out, that the public sidewalk is coming up Route 10. So that will tie this down to uh, the retail uses across the street, um, including the little restaurants and things across the street, and then down to Big Y, and then all the new opportunities that are seem to be happening south of Big Y, out to Antonio's. So it all starting to fit nicely here. Um, so we've presented this, these preliminary plans, and uh, they're in your in your package, and uh, you know we're prepared to move forward with uh, the other commissions that need to review this as well. Thank you. I'd be happy to answer any Thank questions. Well, I'm a little off track, but there. You know, to the upper left there, not on that screen, is Lot E, which was originally described as open space, or is that its, its status now? I remember when we were talking about housing out there, executive housing and stuff. Yeah. And now I see it's categorized as open space. That is the current, I mean, I guess it would yeah, be here if it uh, wasn't. It's 16.36 okay. acres of open space, and it will remain that. Indefinitely? Forever? Yeah. Okay, got it. Mr. Elliott, I showed it on the big plan here. Yeah, okay. yeah, it actually wraps down and then goes, you know, kind of sneaks around a little bit. Um, well, I was going to ask about a forecast for the residential market, but... Oh, yeah, no, that's, yeah, that has it's, nothing it's, to do with your proposal. Mother Nature's returning it back to its right. yeah, okay. previous Got state. It. Mr. Chairman, yeah. our alternate slot to ask questions at this point? No. Well, I wasn't going to, because you mentioned, but I will just break it up, because this is obviously a relevant topic, but... Um, you know, we are interested in making sure that all future development has some um, affordable housing elements. So um, I know that you mentioned that you would consider it, but is, is that something that we can, not necessarily tonight, but is that something that we could require or include in the... I, I suspect that that question will be a, a major part of the review process. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay, that was going to be my point, too. And, and We'd like to see, I'd like to see some consideration of affordable units in that residential component. Uh, perhaps that's a little bit of trade-off for the retail versus business versus residential. But I think uh, we need to do the referral process. And is there a motion? Well, just one more question. Sure. Uh, again, not exactly on top, but the 42 units for special needs folks, how, do, how are those priced? Are those some sort of market price or is those some sort of? Uh, but let's let Tony answer that one. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. When we were approached by Mr. Regan to consider doing the MS housing, mm -hmm. he indicated to us that this was all going to be CHFA housing and that they would not pay market rates for the land. So I asked him how much they would pay for the land. He said they won't pay more than 70% of list price. I said, fine, then buy it at 70% because there's more about development than just selling the dirt. Mm -hmm. We had an opportunity to do something that had never been done in the United States before, and that was to build 48 units of housing for people with long-term disabilities who could live independently. So 47 of those units are occupied by people with MS or similar types of disabilities, and one is a full-time caregiver. Technically speaking, those 48 units are all affordable. 
because they're at 70% of what the average would be. So of the 168 units that are already up, there's an additional 48 that are technically affordable. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I heard while I was sitting there, Mr. Chairman, that you'd like consideration for additional affordability and workforce housing as we go forward. And as I said to you a year ago, I'm not opposed to that. And everyone who walks into my office and talks about wanting to develop these new 72 units, I share that information with them. And their response has been interesting. They've said, we're not opposed to it. We've done it in other communities. If we can work it out so it makes sense economically, we'd be happy to do that. I'm hoping that since it's a pad and since it has its old, whole set of regulations, that when we have a real developer who wants to come in and assuming you approve this concept, wants to come in and develop 72 more units, that a healthy conversation can be had with that developer about what percentage of these units you'd like to see as workforce or affordable. And this is not a political issue, this is an economic issue. The numbers have to work. They have to work to make it happen. Uh, I've never met anyone in this business over 40 years, especially in the last 10 years, who's opposed to affordable housing, who's opposed, opposed to workforce housing. In fact, I'm doing a project of 220 units, hopefully in Mansfield, that will be all workforce housing. The market is there. It's just got to work it out economically. So we're prepared to work with you as we go through the process, as you go through your referrals, come back with hard data and maybe with a developer in hand who you can ask these questions to. But right now, I'd like to have the ability to at least market it as 72 more residential units in Simsbury at that location with an awareness that workforce housing and affordability is important to this community. That's all I can say. Thank you. Thank you. Questions, comments, commission. I guess I, I would just ask um, when you say that um, the 70% uh, of the market value that that land is technically affordable housing, um, does the state consider it um, affordable housing? Does CHA, that come under? CHFA funded the entire project. Yeah. Right. So all of their criteria that was required was necessary to provide the financing for that housing had to have been met and that meant that all the rental rates and everything else had to fall within their criteria so Excuse when this me, i think i think cfha funded housing does qualify that's what i'm just sure. it does yeah. Yeah. so when that they're when they're telling us that. how many units we need or we don't have or 10 percent for affordable housing I guess I'm asking, is that considered in that? I'm not allowed to comment. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yes. we're OK. I think the answer is counts it towards the 10%. Right. It counts towards the 10%. Sure. I hope I Thank answered you. your question, but I, I. I got the answer. And, and Thank we, you. We don't, we, I don't walk around saying well, we've got 48 units of affordable housing. We have 48 units yeah. of special right. needs yeah. housing, which satisfied a market need that has not been done other than recently with Mr. Regan and a HARC program in Canton. He's a visionary man who puts his heart where his mouth is, and we had an opportunity to help. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have a motion for the referral? There's a motion in the back. Yeah, let's mm -hmm. see if we can find it. We'll Did you I'll already do find it? it? No, Ann's going to make it. Ann's going to do it. I'm going to make it. it. All right. All right. Um, so move that the zoning commission refers ZC twenty three eighteen Dorset Crossing a master plan amendment to a planned area development to the conservation commission planning commission and the design uh, review board for a preliminary review of the application with comments requested by June the fifth twenty twenty three. I'll second. 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 By Diane. Further comments? Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Um, Passes 6 nothing. 
you don't mind, I'm going to run to the bathroom. Okay. <laughs> Okay, we will have a five minute recess. <laughs> She's not the only one. <laughs>
you have the light there. Right. You have multiple multifamily units in Powder Forest um, coming out. Well, I think the right. parking and the traffic and access both factor into, you know, if we're saying that they don't need as much parking because they don't have as many cars, then it talks about what other kind of access they have. And that brings up the whole idea of the, the rail trail being considered as part of the access that I am I'm assuming they're planning on using. And there are a whole host of issues with the rail trail, as far as it not being lighted at night, as far as you know not being cleared in the winter. So I think you know they're factoring that in as an option to the parking and traffic and access, but I don't think that that's necessarily I'm not sure I heard that. I think that the public said that. I think that the applicant did not say that. And we do have provisions for a sidewalk if the um, town extends the sidewalk yeah. past the. Uh, okay, but those street. are those are some of the huh. yeah. okay. architectural design. Um, there are a lot of people who think it's um, not a a very Simsbury design, uh, but I think we are limited in our ability to. In fact, we're, we're told we can't use architectural design um, as a criteria for denying it. The form, scale, and density. But uh, and for the record, Dave, I, I don't want to just go by this. I think it's a terrible design for Simsbury. It's an awful thing to be putting into that neighborhood. But it is what the proposal has presented us. Right, I think we, yeah. we had like 98% of the people uh, Right, for good reason. Uh, form, scale, and density. Um, uh, they did reduce it from 80 to 64. That's still 30 units per acre. Um, my feeling is that's, that's a still uh, a very difficult thing to accept. It doesn't fit in the character of the town, uh, which we can't use, but still. Uh, we have to listen to our residents who elected us, and I think they're quite unhappy with that. Well, I would just add to that that the uh, affordable housing that was built on Climax Road after a contested ap application process, that built uh, something like, I think it was 17 or 18 separate homes on four acres. Right. You know, so you look at the ratio that's there, and uh, on, on the 1.9 acres that this lot that we're dealing with reflects, if it was a design anyway comparable to what they did on Climax Road, we'd talk, be talking about eight inv individual houses. We'd probably still say this looks weird in the neighborhood, but eight versus, uh, you yes, know, 18. yeah, yeah, but it's not the same concept, and that's unfortunate. Okay, the, the next one is environmental aspects. I think those are. Um, concerns about the river, which I think most of the inland wetlands things, uh, inland wetlands discussions and re referrals were considering the environmental impacts. And I think that they gave us an approval uh, that it, I think what they, what they found is that in the upland area, there wasn't anything that was impacting the wetlands that they could identify. And I've sat on that commission, and they are not pushovers. I mean, they really are uh, concerned, and if they gave a favorable review, then I'm pretty I was there the, the night they voted, so yeah, you're right. Yes. <laughs> well, I will just, I, I have, have to say, because I, I also was there. Sorry. You need to That's okay. Um, I also was there, and I just want to say that it was hardly unanimous or hardly even enthusiastic. Um, the initial vote would have been a no if a few commissioners hadn't abstained from voting at all. So it initially was going to be declined, but because of the um, commissioners abstaining, they had a second vote and then a third vote because they were at an impasse. And only after some, some concessions to the wording did they, I would say, begrudgingly approve it. So I would hardly call it a enthusiastic, confident vote. Uh, in favor. Right. Interesting. But you also have the uh, town engineer yes. weigh in on the uh, environmental. Yes, aspects. the town engineers uh, accepted the uh, the water flow and, and uh, 
all of that aspects of it. So while I, I think we don't have much of a leg to stand on, even though we we might be worried about the trees as well. Light trespass. Um, I think they're they're um, claiming that they're using um, cut off fixtures, which should keep the light within the within the uh, property. Um, so I guess that it's hard to to be worried too much about that. Again, fire safety. The uh, well, wait a minute. Um, go ahead. On, on lighting trespass, I. I'm not an engineer, but I can't believe there isn't going to be significant light, light trespass just as the people presented. That's my thought. And uh, the neighbors have a legitimate issue there. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm aware that, that there wasn't, uh, we didn't see an engineering study representing the light trespass that would occur. but. Um, you know, with the elevated position of this building, especially the fourth floor over that area, I don't see how you can have well, well, significant light trees. They, they did put a, a, a yeah. fence up to block yeah. the headlights. Yeah. And there is a difference between trespass and safe. Um, yeah. When you're doing trespass, you're saying that your, your lighting doesn't go off, but you can look and see a light on another thing, and that's not trespass. Don't we have down um, dark sky? requirements as well the, for lights. The lights are dark sky compliant. Right, so, so by the very nature, dark sky doesn't have a certain amount of um, lack of light trespass. To go on to fire safety, we had uh, our fire marshal reiterated, correct? Approved it and reiterated that uh, he was okay with the uh, ability to uh, treat fires there, fight fires there. Well, I, I'm not sure that's exactly what was, you know, I, I think that's what was said. I don't know that I would ascribe it to being fact, but when I look back at the material we now have available that came, you know, recently that was called the History of the Fire Marshal's Findings or something, it was a series of emails from uh, from Dave that went into the Dropbox on April 28th. And I didn't see it before May 1st meeting when I asked the applicant if they were working on it, an easement for use of the uh, rails to trails from the state of Connecticut so they could use that for a rear access, theoretically for fire apparatus, although it was suggested I was misunderstanding what the fire apparatus plan was. but. Um, the applicant responded that they were not working with the state on an easement to provide use of that, uh, that rails to trails. But I see in the fire marshal's uh, uh, writings that he pointed out that he thought they might have to apply for uh, permission from Riverview, I'm not sure why Riverview, to use their parking lot as access to the, to the rails to trails. So I think it was kind of a confused sense of ownership or something. I don't know why they would want to use the real river view. They have a gateway. I know they have a locking gate there, but the uh, rails to trails doesn't uh, doesn't have the same apparatus. But my point is just that if the fire marshal felt that they needed to consider getting appro approval from Riverview, that suggests to me that he was talking about getting access for the fire apparatus in and out that way, meaning the use of the rails to trails for fire apparatus. And my concern, part of it was that the uh, fire truck that was used in the plan that we were given a copy of that we all had to look at that demonstrated how a um, particular fire truck that the town bought, um, it's made by a company called E1, it's 40 feet long. It has a 100-foot ladder on it, mm -hmm. and it has a double axle in the back. The thing weighs 40,000 pounds. And um, when you look at the drawing that shows how it maneuvers in the driveways in the front of the building, it's conspicuous by its absence. There's no drawing of how it would maneuver around the back of the building. So I'm not sure 
when there's a concern apparent in the writings of the fire, fire marshal that that implies that all's well with the plan that the, the fire marshal uh, has been part of. I, I don't know in any of the writings that I saw that he said that everything was fine. Um, there are other uh, concerns expressed, including the absence of fire lanes on the plans. There's a call for marking the fire lanes and they're not marked. There's multiple access roads required because, with a, as he says, uh, more than one fire apparatus road shall be provided when it's determined by the AHJ that access by a single road could be impaired by vehicle congestion, condition of terrain, climate conditions, or other factors. Then he goes on to say, with only a 24-foot wide driveway, one entryway and limited road access on site plan, fire apparatus will have issues with vehicle congestion throughout the planned parking area and roadway. This will be increased in winter months with snow accumulation, narrowing road widths. Then he goes on to talk about fire hydrants, then access to the public roadway, then his last bullet point on this, the letter to George of February 14th is the road access for the fire department. His bullet says, the fire department access to the roof will be hindered due to access for a 100 foot ladder truck. Solar arrays and mechanicals mounted on the roof hinder ventilation points and access for fire department personnel. I don't think that's an endorsement by the fire marshal of the plans that were submitted by the applicant. And there's more of that. If you want to take the time, I'll read them off. But he makes a number of comments that leave a question. It looks like the plans don't meet somebody's requirements. Otherwise, he wouldn't be raising these issues. There is a statement, too, uh, from Patrick that says they have addressed, he's talking to uh, the applicant, I think, I believe will need, but I believe they will need additional approvals, such as the access road off the bike trail, possible permission from Riverview to use the access road off their parking lot. But all in all, I think it's, it's an overstatement to say that there's been a satisfactory proposal included here for uh, providing uh, fire services at that location. I think with likely to be a population maybe of 100 people in that building, when I asked at the meeting on uh, May 1st for George to obtain information on exactly how they would be rescuing people trapped on the fourth floor on the east side of the building, he had that note and he asked a question phrased pretty much like that that didn't get a response. The fact is, I had a couple of other questions in that meeting, and the fire marshal has generated information on this site in April and in March, and he's never added another thing to it. They've just said, we stand by the earlier comments. We stand by the earlier comments. They're not saying they're satisfied, it's over, all the concerns are, that's not what they said. Right. Right. George, my reading of it too. Just yeah. so you, I, I have. Have that exact quote on my little notes here, so I um, I agree with you. On well, that. I'm not. I don't want to suggest ill intent or anything like sure. that. But George gave us the impression from his writings and what he said in the meetings that the fire marshal was satisfied, and the applicant certainly trumpeted that over and over and over. Every time I raised a question about the fire thing, it was always, "Oh, the, you're at your expert, your fire marshal reviewed this plan." Mm -hmm. But I don't, I don't think now that we have some paperwork to look at that shows us what the fire marshal documented and what George documented and back and forth between them. I don't think it's as simple as to say it's all set. And while, you know, the majority of, I mean, our process is a democratic one. I, my opinion doesn't necessarily, isn't necessarily shared by everyone, but it sounds like Diane feels, gets the same reading, having spent the time to look at in line by line, document by document, what the fire marshal said. It's not what you thought. If, if you haven't looked at those documents, I think this this is an issue that is not what you thought. It's hard to interpret what he said because he said nothing has his April his last comment was April 28th. Yeah. He says nothing has changed on the site plan from my original comment. That's right. And I'm still in, uh, lost. You must have there. Well. 
What's the data? On that? It never really specified April how these issues were addressed. Nothing has changed on the site plan from my original question. comments for this Bruce's project, which the team has addressed, yeah. the, and I'm still good with. The, he listed his issues. The so is he good with the, the plan, yeah. or is he said, good with his original comments? I, I don't know. From what he wrote, I'd say he's good with what he submitted. He doesn't want to change it, but we haven't asked him. I believe I was told that those comments that were, were then taken to a meeting in which I thought I was told by George that they had a meeting and the outcome of that meeting was that they had been, they were satisfied with how they were going to handle the fire situation. Well. Is that correct, George? They should have written it down, then we could all know. Yes, sir? I said they should have written it down and then we could all know if that was the outcome. But that's certainly not the outcome of the, you know, that you get from reading the documents that well, you circulate. April 28th is so they I have addressed so all concerns. Uh, I, I would, so so we, we submitted um, this history of uh, fire department comments on uh, at least before the April, the April 1st meeting. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, would, I would go a little bit further back to, to my email to Patrick on March 6th where I said, Patrick, I'm running through my prep for tonight's zoning meeting. Mm -hmm. Reviewing your comments, the applicant's responses, and my meeting notes from the Zoom call, and any, any and all site plan related fire district issues have been resolved, question mark. Please confirm, and I understand these comments are not associated with any, any architectural or building plan related, just the site plan, and he answered, they have addressed all concerns but I believe they will need additional approvals such as access road off the bike trail and possible permission from Riverview to use access off their parking. They don't say for what though. What do they need the access for? I, I honestly don't think, and I'm no expert, I'm not pretending to be, that you're gonna drive a 40 foot long, 20 ton fire truck in the back of that building. And I'm still, Disappointed is a kind of expression that we haven't heard how they would they would actually rescue people that are on the upper floors or on the roof from that east side of the building. I thought I heard the applicants say they had no intention of using the fire the um, path. Well, the access could be for rescue with, with, without a fire truck. It could be access to the path speaking to the microphone? As, as needed so I mean I, I don't know necessarily that it's a fire truck that needs to go down the path because they do other things other than fire um, they're responders um, right. so maybe they need access to the path for that right but the access from the back of Mitchell's uh, garage business up there where it's now a Volkswagen dealership from where you can drive right out the back of the Volkswagen dealership onto the rails to trails. It's 400 feet to the paver area at the back of the 446 Hot Meadow Street address. Yeah. So for 400 feet, and if you come in up there, you could go right down to the river. There's an access, a gravel access road down to the river. I mean, I'm, right up there. I'm not a first well, responder. I don't know. Yeah. Um, well, I'm not how either. How they I'm, were thinking I don't know that. why they, they would be interested in access without an assumption that fire apparatus would need to use that road. And so I go back to the question I asked on May 1st, could they explain to us how they're gonna rescue people if they become trapped and oh, heaven forbid that that happens, but you know, the, the apparatus that is the fire, the sprinkler system in the building, they're not perfect. And so uh, how would they get people down out of the third and fourth floor? I don't know. Okay, let's move on to the next topic. Stormwater management and off-site drainage. Um, residents were concerned about the overflow situation from um, the 25 year flood or whatever it is um, and what impact that would have. I think that that was part of the 
Inland Wetlands re referral to us and their consideration. Any comments from anybody else? The town engineer was happy with, uh, with the assertion that they were not increasing the runoff from the property, which I think is what the requirement is. It was my understanding that went back once or twice as well in the beginning, correct? Okay. With the town engineer. Is that right, George? Did the, the, the town engineers went back and forth a few times with that calculation? That's correct. Yeah. That's correct. There was a, they were, they were. Initially, um, they weren't happy and, with and it. And that's, that's kind of in the record, um, the town engineers kind of res uh, questions and responses over uh, at least, I think, three occasions. Okay. Uh, I think the last, the, the last submission was a, a letter from the town engineer on April 17th. <laughs> Noise issues. Um, there were some concerns about the HVAC units and generators uh, on the south side of the building, I believe. I don't know. I think there was a suggestion by the applicant that making the building smaller and repositioning it slightly, which I'm not sure if it's happen, but that that would could pull that it. noise back from the proximity, close proximity to the resident to the south of 446. I'm not sure if that gets down to 75 decibels or not at the property line, Dave. <laughs> it has to. <laughs> okay. Uh, parcel and package delivery storage, I, I think they answered the applicant answered that, I believe. Anybody got questions about that? Comments? Snow storage? Um, any comments? There was a lot of discussion on snow storage. The applicant, I think, tried to answer them. Um, I think when you see the the snow at Stop and Shop sometimes after one of these big storms, you know, there's a lot of big piles and we just somehow live with those, but I don't know that we can turn down an application because of it. Well, it goes back to the, the safety of being able to navigate around the parking lot when there is, when there are enormous snow piles. Right. Property <laughs> values. Just go ahead. one last sort of uh, dissenter on this one too. I, I don't feel like the plan to store the snow that was described to us is really going to be adequate when we have serious snowfall in New England. I, I heard it, but I didn't find it particularly believable. I, w I would also add to that is that I would think that with the snow storage and the overflow of snow, it's going to further reduce the number of parking spaces. Right. That's basically that's where they put the snow. Right. In the middle of the night when the guy's plowing. Yeah. <laughs> They're not going to wonder what, what, what actually was the language of the, of the thing that passed the zoning commission. No, they're going to be trying to get it done, go home, get in bed. And wherever the snow goes, it they're goes. They're going to wait till 6 right. in the morning. Right. Okay, property values. We had no, we had no testimony in property values, did we? Just from the residents, but we can't, we can't, can't, zone. can't argue, I mean, you can't zone, but you can't argue that that's going to impact property values negatively. Well, the argument in that is that I'm, I'm not sure other than the applicant and the property owner how many people really would argue that there's going to be a negative effect on the property values in that area, in that area, but we, as a zoning commission, we have a responsibility, it's part of the Connecticut statutes, to act uh, in a way that doesn't diminish property values to the citizens of our town. And I'm 100% certain a positive vote on this thing is going to reduce the property values of those immediate neighbors. I'm sure of it. Now, 
everybody's entitled to their own opinion, but I don't think there's any doubt. And I don't know how we reconcile the juxtaposition of the state's two state statutes, one that says in 8-30G there's very, very little in terms of existing regulation that we can really hold this application to them. They get a pass on so much, it's, uh, it's hard to believe, but it is what it is. Yet we have a responsibility to the residents to preserve the property values, at least not worsen them. And I'm 100% sure, as I said, this is going to, an affirmative action here is going to negatively affect those, those families. And if this, if this is approved, there will be another and another. And well, I mean, what, we have what, where will the next street and the next neighborhood be? But you have Hot Meadow Street right there. I mean, you're on Hot Meadow yeah, Street. I, you're on Hot Meadow Street. It's a major thoroughfare through the middle of town with commercial buildings on it. Um, consistently. Right. But the people who have lived in Hazel Meadow and the abutting streets for the last 25 years or 40 years or whatever. Actually longer than that. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah some of them, sure. Um, but It's just something to consider. I mean, Hot Meadow. Again, we've had no testimony to, to that effect. Um, so. It's not a factor in 830G cases. 830G cases is right. not a it's not going to fly in that respect. Availability to access an open space and amenities. Um, they're concerned about the density, really, that's what they're saying, is we get too many units on too small a property. And uh, I think we all sort of agree with that, but uh, to turn it into a public safety and health issue is, uh, is more difficult. Anybody got any comments on that? No. Well, I think there's some connections between when we talk about parking and other things. It's the size of the building, the size of the uh, impervious surface in a 1.9 acre lot. If the building and the parking weren't so large and it was appropriately sized for a 1.9 acre lot, you wouldn't have potentially some of the safety issues that we see. Now, um, 1.9 acres is not a lot of land for a building with 64 units in it. It's four stories high. Okay, let's start narrowing down what we feel and don't feel. And I think it's time to us to say whether or not we're well, for this or against it. How about the archaeological conditions? resources? Pardon? The archaeological resources, do Item number 14. Archaeological resources. Citizens recommended that. No, you can do a phase one study as part of your conditions. Hmm. Is that a suggestion? You can recommend a motion. Okay, so. I think I'll lead off if you want. Um, our zoning regulations separate incompatible uses and are directed to ensure public safety and health. Uh, on our zoning regulations, following those uh, mandates, require two par parking places per dwelling unit. The vessel proposal is too dense, resulting in 1.6 parking places per dwelling unit. And because there are no sidewalks, there's no public transportation, only from the Weetog environment lot, which is um, not reachable except along the highway. And residents will have to rely on automobile transportation and parking is is important. The parking es expert testimony did not cover rural sites with no sidewalks and no public transportation. Therefore, because the project as it is now constituted does not meet the zoning regulations, two parking places per unit, 
without change, I will vote no. Without changes um, to the density. Yeah. Well, I think we can all agree that the application does not meet our zoning regulations. But uh, 830G mm -hmm. um, says local zoning regulations don't matter when considering you know, affordable housing. Um, that we can only deny on the basis of public health and safety concerns. Um, Simsbury does not have a great track record when it comes to our denials of 830G. We are 0 for 2. Um, and so um, in the Riverbend lawsuit, the court um, said, quote, 830G requires that the record establish more than a mere theoretical possibility of harm to support the, ne the denial of an affordable housing application, unquote. So absent um, you know, expert professional uh, reasons, you, you have a hard time saying no. Um, and then in this case, we have an awful lot of the professionals saying it's okay. The one issue that I do have is on the parking. Um, actually, if you, as I reread the parking report, it's inconsistent. Um, they actually use different numbers in the narrative than they did in the charts. Um, when, and the two particular units that I was considered you know, close to us was the Bloomfield one. Um, so what I'm thinking um, that I would propose is that we do have a proposed, um, yes, approval, but I would say as a consideration that we limit the units to 48 units and three floors instead of the 64 four floors. And that would be a consideration. Then we're in the position of they can accept the 48 units and three floors and build, or we end up in court. So. I could support that. Bruce? What would that do to the parking? It'd give us, well, 48, yeah, it, using the 98, it would give you two per unit. Oh, so the, the parking number would stay the same. The building just gets smaller. Uh, yes. But we have, yeah, so you're used to, well, it's a little, they had seven or something in reserve. It would, you wouldn't need the seven in reserve because you would still have the two units. Because there is a concern of, you know, what do you do? And, and, and looking at the, 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 the parking numbers that came through, you know, they do test, and I don't know what, time of the day most people are home but it was a Monday morning at 3 or 4 a.m. you know and I don't know does that you know would a Sunday morning at 3 or 4 a.m. mean more people are in their house than a Monday morning at 3 or 4 a.m. Um, but I, you know I think maybe on a weekend you do have more people at home um, <laughs> so that, that is the big concern here is, is you know someone coming home in the evening and there is no parking and it's not like these other sites that they talk about where you could go somewhere else to, to park. There really isn't anywhere else to park on this one. Um, so that I think that's a potential solution to this is if they would consider removing. There isn't, you know, they have an economic need. Uh, and that's one of the things we didn't address and, and the public did mention is they didn't consider the prices uh, of the units as affordable, but that is not set by the developer. That is state regulation. So they, they have nothing to do with the calculation of other than if, People's income going up, they don't have any control over the uh, the unit price. Okay, Bruce, what do you think? Um, I actually, I think if I sit here for another hour, I'm not going to envision the configuration that I would support. I'm not going to support this. I've, I've run for re-election a number of times, and I've always said that I support development when it's properly scaled and properly placed. And this thing doesn't fit my vision of anything uh, that I'm interested in in Simsbury, I'm not going to vote for it. Fine. Unless, I mean, based on what I know now, the two proposals, the two suggestions you offer, and then my vision of the whole thing. But and somebody else might have another set of changes that could spur or rethink. And Yeah, um, I've thought long and hard about this, and it has really bothered me past couple of months, I've also been to all of the uh, affordable housing forums that have been available um, to educate myself um, further on all of this. Um, 
I realize that our, we are very constricted by the state requirements. Um, but in my heart of hearts, I just think this is an awful development. I don't think it's the right development for the right area. There are so many other places in Simsbury that this project could go that wouldn't impact the town and, these, and the residents. Um, I could support what you said, three stories, fewer units. But as it stands now, um, I, I guess my vote would have to be a no. But I'm not sure that would stand up in court based on the state regulations. Okay, well, go ahead. Bella? Um, you know, I, I think we're going to have to address this going forward. Um, the density of the project, obviously, is something that is bothering a lot of people. Um, you know, there was a, a, an article in the Times this weekend, um, very timely, that, um, you know, the single family house um, it is not a sustainable model for the majority of our population going forward. You know, um, married households with children um, in the last 60 years have gone down by half. Single individual households have more than doubled. Um, so density in the suburbs is going to become an issue, and we have it right in front of us. Um, this project checks off a lot of our wish list for a project like this. It's on Hot Meadow Street. We have site utilities. Um, it's very close to commercial development. We have multifamily housing across the street. It's on a main thoroughfare. There is a bus available. Um, so. Yeah, it doesn't look like a colonial house. It's not a single family house, um, but it does provide housing to a larger percentage of our population um, that needs that kind of housing. Um, so in a lot of respects, I think it's a good project. Um, the parking is a huge issue. Um, it's actually my only issue with it. I mean, um, I would have preferred when they decrease the units to see them go down a floor. So I think Kevin's idea, I think going down a floor solves a lot of problems for the residents next door as far as their concerns about light. Um, it, the density goes down, the parking goes up. Um, with that change, I would be in favor of the project. Okay. Diane? Well, um, a lot of people touched on the things that I, you know, the whole thing here that I was going to read, but that's okay. <laughs> I won't do that to you people. Um, um, I agree very much. Well, I am not in favor of this project. I'll start off with that just to say. Um, I've had issues with the parking all along. I think that um, one of the examples that they provided to us was comparing to um, a study in Middletown, which clearly we're talking apples and oranges here as far as developments and communities. Um, you know, again, Yes, there is there is bus line. It's not on a, on a regular um, schedule. It's not very close to the, the development. It's going to require folks walking on a main road or something like that. So I definitely am concerned about the parking and the accessibility for that unit, uh, for that development. Um, just a few other things I want to mention. First of all, and this is just, I'm really bothered by being asked to take a lot on faith. There's a lot of trust being asked of us. Um, you know, there's no precedent uh, that, that there's nothing to indicate that this developer is necessarily going to be a good neighbor. Um, there's talk that they might have a property manager on site, but you know, as far as maintaining the, the snow removal and making sure that those things are happening and, and figuring out if they're going to have a place to people put bikes and have a place to deliver packages. You know, if they're not driving, I would imagine they're going to have a lot of deliveries because people are going to be, rather than grocery shopping, they're going to have stuff brought to them. Again, how is that all going to be managed? If there was a property manager on site, I'd feel a little bit more comfortable, but they may just be a person who lives there. You know, it's not, again, it's, it's, a, it's a trust issue. We're being asked to trust, and I don't feel comfortable with that. Um, early in the process, someone I spoke with pointed out to me that we're being asked to choose new affordable tenants over existing affordable residents who've been living in this town, paying taxes. I've driven around that little community, I shouldn't say little, but I've driven around the community several times over the last couple weeks, 
and it's a it's a lovely little community. And yeah, you know, I know it is right on Hop Meadow, but when you pull in there, you know, there's a lot of trees. It's a very nice self-contained development. And there's no question that this is going to impact their property values. And I have a really hard time making that call and saying, I understand we're over a barrel here with this, but I just can't in good conscience vote in favor of one affordable housing over another and, and over new residents over existing residents. Um, fire safety, again, is a concern. As Bruce mentioned, I had a whole section on fire safety. Um, you know, if they were able to modify it, you know, uh, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not comfortable with this development as it stands in any way. Um, I know it was suggested bringing it down to maybe a three-story apartment building, but it might even be more reasonable to go to a two-level uh, apartment building, although I'm not sure that would be financially advantageous to the developer. I don't, I don't know. I, I think that's, that would leave them with 32 units and two acres at 16 units per acre, which is dense. Um, it's but I think dense. economically, they have to make it work too. If it doesn't work economically, uh, we'll have worse than a slum in our town. So I don't know. We've got. We've got, I think, four people who would agree to three stories and 48 units as a constraint. Is that correct? Donna, yes. Ann, Kevin, and me. So, Kevin, why don't you make a motion? So, can you put the motion up there? <laughs> uh, the, the affirmative? I'm not going to get to your focus. Yeah, hang on. I'm not going to get to the focus. Mr. Chairman, um, if you're going to uh, consider and potentially adopt a motion which makes a material change in the applicant's proposal, um, the law requires in an 8-30G that you state your reasons on the record in the form of an official collective statement. It's not like a regular zoning appeal where the court is tasked with searching the record in 830G as you know the burden shifts to the commission and the cases and the law require that in a motion either a denial or a substantial change which would be appealable by the applicant you state the reasons for that change um, with as much specificity as you can uh, as you spoke you have a list of issues I heard yes. fire safety, I heard parking. It would be good to include those in whatever motion you're going to consider. Okay. Okay, so the motion I would, do, would make is the, is the, uh, the staff motion. Um, you move to approve application um, ZC 23-03 with the conditions that are listed here. One, the application, um, meets the requirements of um, 830G. It provides the 30% of the units as affordable. Um, and the Wetlands um, Commission has, uh, has considered it and, and finds the application meets all the standards for approval. Um, D, a large, that's another thing. Although a great um, deal of the testimony was offered, generating a host of concerns and potential issues. The record does not provide expert testimony or evidence that a substantial public interest related to health, safety, and welfare exists other than parking. So I did add other than parking there. Um, the modifications and conditions set um, low are intended to mitigate the, the issues. Um, and so you have the shall be, uh, the project shall be developed in substantial conformance with the site plan title. The project shall be developed um, in substantial conformance with the, the stormwater management report. The project shall be developed in substantial conformance to the landscaping plan. The project shall be developed in substantial conformance with revised architectural set stamp. Um, um, 
Is that one? Is that yeah, still that's December one we're going to potentially change. Uh, in right? March. Um, so no, we didn't get that. May for, okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, the architectural May first. Uh, one thing I would interrupt myself here is that social media has had a lot of pictures going around, and it's it's the wrong picture that goes around. And so I um, did want to point out that it has been revised by design review in, the, in their plan. So it's, two, it's a two colored building instead of the one color. And that is the one that is referenced in the, in the draft condition. Yeah. Um, the project shall be developed in substantial conformance to the housing affordability plan um, for a period of two or three years. Three years. Per period of three years from the approved date, the applicant shall uh, complete and submit two inspections and maintenance report each year. Um, as it highlights here, and prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall submit an erosion and sediment control uh, bond in the form of acceptable to the town in the amount of 50000 um, The parking lot light shall be limited in utilizing fixtures having a Kelvin rating not to exceed 3,000 Kelvins, utilizing the lighting fixtures as specified in the lighting plan prepared. Um, on, uh, there's something missing there. Prepared by the no, company. but its revision date is for two, 2002. Or oh, maybe it, it's not dated here. Uh, it's dated. The, the, the date of the stamp from that submittal is revision four, dated 2022. Oh, okay. So there isn't a, there isn't a specific date. Okay. All right. Um, and all exterior lighting shall utilize energy and time management controls such that the parking lot shall be 100% illuminated through 10 a.m. So 10 p.m and 40% illumination through 6 a.m. Um, and then um, the vinyl fence uh, depicted at 36 inches on a site plan SL1, referenced in condition number one, shall be increased to the minimum height of 48 inches. The applicant shall submit an integrated pest management, pest management plan with form and substance acceptable to the town prior to the issuance of the building permit. The Applicants shall uh, complete and submit to the planning department as a phase, a phase one architectural study prior to the issuance of any building permit on site. Archaeological study. You said architectural. Oh, did I say arche ar archaeological? Yeah. Right. Um, I took my glasses off and I carry it. <laughs> prior to the issuance of any building permit on the project, all relevant documents shall be revised. That would be a nice thing because there have been so many revisions. Uh, to reflect the final unit count and any other changes or modifications directed and approved by the Zoning Commission as necessary. Uh, 13, the applicant shall reserve right of way for future dedication at the request of the town and or the Connecticut Department of Trans Transportation, a 10 foot wide area for a future sidewalk along Hot Meadow Street uh, frontage. And then 14 is actually number one on the denial, if you would move to the denial. <laughs> um, due to inadequate uh, parking leading to unsafe parking conditions. The project um, proposes a maximum of 102 parking spaces for 64 residential units. The parking ratio is 1.59 uh, spaces per unit. The standard parking ratio in the town regulations are two spaces. Uh, the plan does not provide areas for overflow parking, nor does it provide parking for guests or visitors. Therefore, parking is likely to overflow onto Hot Meadow Street creating an extremely unsafe condition for residents of the project and the public and introduces vehicular conflicts with parked uh, vehicles along a heavily traveled corridor. There is a limited uh, shoulder area along the stretch of uh, Hot Meadow Street. Therefore, um, the number of units is limited to 48 on three floors. So there's an addition there. Here a second. Yeah, I've got to see what the, 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 the second, I just have a, a second, please. Sure, I'll second it. Second
In, in, in B? I think that, so these, these are findings. It is. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna vote or not. I don't think this is gonna be material in the that change isn't gonna be material in the final. But so what do you got here? Just a draft motion? Yeah. No, that's, this is the motion. Which which sentence do you want to remove, Bob? Just a second. The town of Simsbury has a demonstrated need for affordable residence. Motion to remove that sentence. Ian? I'll second it. Mm -hmm. Ian approves it. Okay. Further discussion? Are you ready to pull the trigger? Are you going to vote on removing the sentence? Right? You're going to vote on it. No, we don't. Need it. We just, the two, two of us made the motion to remove it. We don't, it's mm -hmm. not a separate vote. But also, in D, I did say, uh, I don't know if you were paying attention, but we did want to mention that there was a safety concern okay. on parking. Okay, so take parking out of the related to health and welfare, but we are that there is a parking issue. Substantial. You said that. I can't understand. Your microphone's Your turned microphone's off. off. How about now? Yeah. yeah. D, is this inconsistent with what you put it's at the end? Yes. Right. So yes. you would yeah, add a sentence. <laughs> Although a great deal of public testimony, the record uh, provides expert testimony and evidence of a substantial public interest related to public health, safety, and welfare exists regarding the parking. The parking park. So add that sentence to what's yeah. yeah. Do we have expert testimony? Okay. Yeah, and? Do, do we have expert testimony no, 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 about no. the parking? Uh, excuse or me, just Mr. Elliott, uh, please disregard, disregard what you just you handed. You cannot allow any material to be added to this proceeding. Take it easy, Kevin. Okay. And do you agree with the modification? Yes. That Kevin yes. agreed yeah, to? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. And can you scroll down, George? Let's review it. Scroll through it one more time. We just have to make sure that your added language is consistent. You, you right. have to show. Oh, you, you gave me April 28th. Is it April 28th or 23rd? On the last slide. Yeah, 23rd. Okay. Yeah, 23rd. My copy is up 28th. Okay. Base dates. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You went through the ball. So we're not mentioning modification at this point. Well, the modification. Sorry, the mo we're not mentioning modifications, you know, with the understanding. Where, where did that get added in? At the end. We at added it in okay. at the end. But you've got to make sure it's consistent throughout the body of the resolution. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay, you just go further.
in, in your motion, you were added paragraph 14. Do you want to elaborate how that represents a substantial? Well, I thought it did. If you can go to number one again on the next page. I doubt, no, 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 Proposal to reduce it to three stories. Okay, I'm sorry. That's the last sentence. It's it's not it, it's not printed here, but we, it was read. Okay. Therefore, we uh, recommend yeah, we, we, the condition of the reason behind condition okay. of the request. Yeah. Hold on. Where does it go? What paragraph? Right at the end. Well, it's, there's a it paragraph 14. Where, yeah. And it then, becomes and paragraph and 14. And then added at the end of paragraph 14, it would say that the number of units is limited to 48 on three floors and three floors. Because of the concerns. Yeah. Of the yeah. Okay, are we ready? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm a new ham. Ann, Donna, Kevin, and I. Oh, wait a second. What was I just voting for? The whole, part, the whole thing. Oh, no. Take my vote back. I'm, all right, I'm mixed up. What are we voting on here? We're voting on we're approving it with three floors and okay. 48 units. 48 units. Got it. Max. Okay. Mm hmm So you, Ann, are you voting for it? No. 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 Kevin? Yes. Okay. So the motion fails. And it's denied. Thank you. Thank you. So now we need to make the denial motion then. Okay. Yeah, you need to have Hang on a second. Okay. See what you have to say. You did the right thing. I could support the three levels, the three floors. Oh, okay. But we're going to move. They got to cool the loose. What? That's where you to forty-eight and three. The um. Yeah. And you're familiar with this that's issue with the six-member commission. But it takes four vote, four further votes to adopt any motion, whether it's a denial or approval. You the the. Motion that was raised was a motion to approve. Correct. It did not get four votes. So it fails. So it fails. In the absence of any motion, additional motion to approve in any form, the application is denied. Right. You got seconds. Can we move to approve two stories? Yes, we can. I mean, I'm just wondering if that would avoid a lawsuit, but... No. Well, that's a... I don't know. I mean, I'm just... Three stories is a material change. Two stories is a very material change and would obviously be appealable. I have no idea whether the applicant would find that acceptable or satisfactory or not. I'm but just... it clearly would be eligible to generate an appeal under 8-30J in which the commission would face the burden of showing that its reduction of two stories was based on a substantial public interest that outweighed the need for public affordable housing. Okay. So three stories and two stories for me really doesn't make much of a change in terms of the posture of the commission. Okay, so let's, do we have, do we have four votes for two stories? I just thought we would that that's, no, that's just my that's just my comment. I'm not telling you you can't consider it. I'm telling you it's not gonna make a big difference as to whether or not you have a appeal. Or not. And that's just it, it's you don't have a lawsuit. Sorry. We need to conclude this. Anne? Yes. I'm sticking with my no. Yeah. Pardon your no, even on two stories. No, I would vote a yes for two stories. Okay, that's what I said. I'm sorry. If we modified the motion, 
okay. for two stories and 32 units. Yes. Would you vote yes? I would vote a yes. Donna? Yes. Diane? I know I'm the one who asked you about it, but I just brought it up. I know. I'm not thrilled um, with it, but it's better. Kevin, do you want to redo your motion? Also, well, I, I think it's the, to I make the same motion, except that, that we, the consideration is that we limit um, due to safety okay. building to 32 units on two floors. Okay, so you've modified your motion. The second was Ann. Yes. You modify it. It's okay? Yes. Okay. All right. Let's vote again. All in favor of the modified motion. Yes, I guess so. Four. Diane, Ann, I Kevin, know, I, I, and I. I, I, I I brought it up, I guess, yes, I guess, yes. And mine's very reluctant, yes. Diane, they had four votes without it. So okay. You know. yeah. And those opposed? Yeah. Oh, actually, uh, Bruce, I I'm opposed. Back. So oh, it right. passes five, nothing. Yeah. Oh, you can tell where we all are. Five, one, I'm sorry. Oh, I think, I, I think I, I said no, but it doesn't really, yeah. She Mr. Chairman, too. took your vote back? Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Chairman, we need a clear vote here. Okay. Okay, sorry, Let's my bad. Do it so again. I would like you to stay state, in. restate the revised motion. The first motion failed because it didn't get four votes. Okay. If a member would like to raise a second motion and put it on the floor and have it seconded, it's important that that motion be clear and really important that how many voted gets to be clear okay Kevin. yeah 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 so the motion is the same as the first one except the very last sentence of it will say that it's the building is limited to 32 units and two floors so we just changed two numbers in the motion and then the second i'm so oh, second it yes okay is that clear all right let's have a uh, individual vote one by one I know. I brought it up. I'm saying no. I Diane says no. Donna? I, I say yes. Ann? I guess I'm going to say no, because in my heart and soul, that's really what I want to say. Yes. Kevin? Means yes. So it's three to three. I'm three. still a no. Still a no. Okay. Three to three. So that motion fails. So, someone needs to make a negative. I think that's it. Unless you, you, you did not achieve a four vote uh, majority on any motion that was raised, therefore it's a denial. Correct. That's, what, yeah. that's correct. But we need to make a denial motion that would. No. You yeah, you do in order to. No, you don't. In order to. No, you said no. Well, you're going to have to defend this. <laughs> that's why I'm looking at it. Before the meeting, yeah, I know. You know, do we have a leg to stand on? No, because he's denying a reasonable application for a great um, The commission for the commission must state on the record the reasons <laughs> for the denial, and, and you must point out that the decision is necessary to protect the substantial public interest in the health, safety. Um, in other matters that the commission may legally consider. Such public interest must be stated by the commission that it believes that they clearly outweigh the need for affordable housing. So to make a record crystal clear, if some member wanted to raise a motion to deny for the same reasons that the people who voted against it made, if it's seconded, um, but the maker of the motion must state the reasons for the denial that meets the standard that comes out of the statute. Is that clear? Yes. So that yeah, really. parking is not a reason for denial because we voted uh, no, refused to approve a motion in which parking was meeting our standard. 
So it's not a reason for denial? It's not a reason that we can use for the denial. Well, what was stated in the modified approval motion, paragraph 14, was to protect the substantial public interest in the health, safety, and welfare of the people that you were reducing the size of, of the project. Three people voted against that, presumably because that wasn't enough of a protection of the public health and safety. So if one of those members who voted in a negative were to raise a motion to deny and state on the record that reason and whatever reason you believe to be the case, I think that would clarify the record as to what the commission is doing tonight. Okay. So we have three people who denied it, who voted no. Does one of you want to make a motion to deny this application with a reason? Can we use the negative motion that was provided to us? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that one. Yes. I started this. I'll make a motion. Um, I move that the Zoning Commission denies application ZC-23-03 of Vessel RE Holdings LLC applicant EAY Properties LLC owner for a site plan pursuant to CGS 8-30G for construction of a 55,030 square foot 64 unit multifamily development at 446 Hopmeadow Street. Assessor's map G13, block 142, lot 003C, Simsbury, Connecticut 06070, based on following public testimony on the record, public testimony on the record and the following findings. Um, the application rep represents a substan substantial threat to public health, safety, and welfare, and these threats outweigh the need for affordable housing. Um, inadequate parking leads to unsafe parking conditions. Um, do I need to go through the whole? Uh, the project proposes a maximum of 102 total parking spaces, 64 residential units. Parking ratio is 1.59 spaces per unit. The standard parking ratio in the townwide Simsbury zoning regulations are two spaces per residential unit. Regardless of unit type, the site plan does not provide areas for overflow parking, nor does it provide parking for guests or visitors. Therefore, parking is likely to overflow onto Half Meadow Street, Street Route 10 creating an extremely unsafe condition for residents of the project and the public and introduces vehicular conflicts with parked vehicles along a heavily traveled corridor. There is limited shoulder area along that stretch of Hop Meadow Street. Uh, traffic conditions and access to the site. The project proposes access to the 64-unit development on Hop Meadow Street via an unsignalized access point. Applicant failed to adequately demonstrate how the access point would operate safely. Considering the high traffic in the corridor and likelihood of backup delays associated with the light at the intersection of Hoffman Street and Powder Forest. Erosion, uh, off-site erosion and sediment impacts, there is a strong potential for erosion and siltation. The stormwater management facilities proposed are likely to create a concentration of outflow during large storm events, leading to off-site erosion and the depositing of silt and sedimentation and contaminants in the wetlands and water course. The project has not demonstrated that adequate protections are in place during large storm events. The project did not respond to requests to diffuse the stormwater runoff in these two locations, thus drainage patterns will be affected. Inappropriate density scale and form, the project proposes 64 residential units on a 1.9 acre site, the density of 32 units per acre at four stories. The structure is re represents the tallest commercial residential structure in Simsbury. This is an urban density with virtually no local comparison. There's no open space proposed or any community amenities. This level of density combined with the lack of open space represents a substantial public health threat to future residents. There is no place for children to play or residents to recreate. You're not limited to this? If there was other concerns that were raised and articulated tonight, you could add those to your motion. And the more definitive your motion is, the better. I would say that I think the fire safety Absolutely. should be should be listed as well. Um, concerns about fire safety and fire um, access of fire vehicles. Um, to the east side of the building. On the east side of the building and um, concerns about easement. Um, Lack, uh, lack of easement. Lack of easement. Okay, do we have a second? A second. Second by Bruce. We have more discussion. Okay, I'm confused now because if <laughs> I voted in the positive, 
for the first motion. It's a new vote. It's a, it's this, is a new this is a new vote. New motion. A new motion, new vote. You're, as a member, you're free to vote however you Okay, Diane. Aye. Adam. I don't necessarily agree with all of these things. You so. have the opportunity to raise an amendment to the motion if you choose. I have the opportunity to what? To raise an amendment to the motion on the floor if you choose. And then that will be voted on. And Keep going. <laughs> and give me a minute. I can vote in the meantime. I am a Bruce. yes. No. And I will vote aye. I'm going to vote no. Okay. So the denial motion passes four to two. Commission business? Yes. Move we adjourn. Kevin, move we adjourn. We have a second. Second. Second, second. second by Bruce. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much.